Hello everyone. Today we'll discuss synthetic division and remainder theorem. Now you see, uh, synthetic division is actually regarding division of a polynomial f x by a polynomial which is a linear polynomial x minus a with leading coefficient one. Okay, that means the restriction is so you can divide f x using synthetic division by only a linear polynomial with leading coefficient one. Okay, so like uh, this, uh, here we took f x equal to x cube minus six x square plus five x plus one, which is a cubic polynomial, and suppose I want to divide this by x plus one. Okay. Now, if I want to divide f x, this f x by uh, suppose g x. What is g x? G x equal to say another polynomial of degree two, right? So, can you apply synthetic division in that case? No, because so this is not a linear polynomial, right? Okay, so this is the only restriction for synthetic division. That means, so in that case, we have to go for long division. Right. Okay. So that means if whenever you are dividing f x by a linear factor, then you can go for synthetic division. Okay. It is a shortcut method for dividing of polynomial f x by a linear factor because long division can involve many steps and take a lot of time. Right. So now let us go into the division. Okay. So how do you divide? You see. So here you are dividing. This f x by x plus one, right? So here you have to first get the value of a over here. So what is the value of a here? You see, so I can write this as minus of minus of one. Okay, x plus one can be written as x minus of minus of one. So what is the value of a here? It is minus of one. So we'll put it over here. Next, we list all the coefficients of the powers of x. Okay, so in the descending order, what does it mean? We will first consider the highest possible power of x present over here. You see, it is x cube. And remember one thing: we have to consider all possible powers of x. Okay, so in the descending order, starting with the highest power of x. Okay, so here, so all the powers of x are present. Like so, it is starting with three, then it is two, one, and zero, right? Suppose you have f x equal to x power four minus six x plus one. So here you see four is the highest possible power. So next possible power should be x cube, right? Which is not present over here. So in that case, we'll write this as zero times x cube plus zero times x square minus of six x plus one. Okay, so here all the coefficients of all the powers of possible powers of x uh, with st with uh, starting with uh, x cube are present. Okay, so uh, so let us uh, first list all the coefficients. Okay, so what is the coefficient of x cube? You see, it is one. So next possible coefficient is minus of six. Next, it is plus of five. Next, it is one. Okay, so next we'll uh, bring this one. That means the leading coefficient unchanged over here. Okay, so next our task is to multiply these two terms. One into minus one is minus one. The resulting value will be put over here. Okay, so next we'll add these two elements. That means minus six minus of one is minus of seven. Okay, next we'll repeat the same process. That means we'll multiply minus seven and minus one. We'll take it over here. Okay, so minus seven. And uh, minus one. Okay, so it is seven. Okay, so seven plus five is twelve. So twelve times minus one is further minus of twelve. Okay, minus of twelve plus one is minus of eleven. Okay, so this is the process you start with. Okay, so next the last term, the last one represents the remainder. Okay, so this is the remainder, and this part actually determines the quotient. Okay, so you have divided f x, which is a polynomial of degree three, by a linear polynomial, right? So your quotient should be a polynomial of degree two, isn't it? So one less, okay, than the degree of f x. Okay, so that should be a polynomial of degree two. Now, what are the coefficients of those? Powers of x, okay, of a polynomial of degree two, that is determined by these 
elements okay so what is the coefficient of x squared it is 1 next the coefficient of x is minus of 7 okay plus 12 so this is our quotient and the remainder is given by minus of 11 okay so next let us take another example then we'll uh, relate those results with remainder theorem so let us take fx equal to x power 5 minus of 3x cube plus 2x plus 1 okay so which is a polynomial of degree 5 and let us divide by gx what is our gx say it is x minus of 2 so we want to divide fx by x minus 2 so which is a linear polynomial with leading coefficient 1 so we can go for synthetic division right so what is the value of a here you see it is 2 isn't it so we'll put this 2 over here and what are the coefficients present over here you see so we have started with x power 5 what is the next possible power of x it is 4 which is not present so we'll write first this as 0 x power 4 3 x cube plus 2x plus 1 okay so what is the first coefficient is 1 next it is 0 next it is minus of 3 after that sorry it is 0 times x square plus 2x plus 1 okay so it is minus of 3 then it is 0 then it is 2 then it is 1 okay so leading coefficient 1 comes over here unchanged next we'll multiply 2 into 1 the resulting value would be over here so we'll add 2 plus 0 it is 2 then 2 times 2 is 4 so 4 minus of 3 is positive 1 okay so 2 into 1 is 2 2 plus 0 is 2 then 2 into 2 is 4 4 plus 2 is 6 6 into 2 is 12 and it is 13 right so 13 is the remainder so this is our remainder okay and you are dividing a fifth degree polynomial by a linear polynomial right so our quotient qx should be a polynomial of degree 4 okay so x power 4 the coefficient is 1 after that it is 2 times x cube then it is 1 times x square plus 2 times x plus 6 okay and the remainder is 13. If I ask you to get the remainder, okay, if I don't ask you for the quotient, I just want to get the remainder. You see, here we can use remainder theorem. So now before going into the remainder theorem, let us just recapitulate what is division algorithm actually. So what is division algorithm? So this is actually regarding division of any polynomial fx, okay, and uh, by a polynomial gx. Say fx and gx, the two polynomials of degree, say n and m, where the restrictions are n is always greater or equal to m. Okay, and gx uh, is not equal to zero. Okay, so fx and gx be two polynomials. If I want to divide fx by gx, okay, then there exists then there exist unique polynomials, right? Qx, which is called the quotient and Rx, such that we can write this relation, right? Fx equal to Gx into Qx plus Rx, right? Where Rx, degree of Rx, either Rx equal to zero, so either, so either Rx equal to 0 or degree of Rx is less than degree of Gx, right? So this is our division algorithm that we have already learned, okay? So now if I want to use this division algorithm, so here we have taken x power 5 minus 3x cubed 
So our fx is x power 5 minus 3x cube plus 2x plus 1. Okay. So this can be written as, so fx can be written as gx into qx. Okay. So that means you see, so here, so fx equal to, so what is our gx actually? gx is x minus of 2, right? So gx is x minus of 2 times q of x plus rx. Okay, now what is rx? So r must be a constant, right? Since you are dividing fx by a linear polynomial, so the degree of rx is either is always less than zero, right? Always strictly less than zero. So your R must be a constant, isn't it? So I can, so R is a constant, right? Okay. So here you see, if I put F of two, so if you evaluate F of two, you will see it is two minus two of Q evaluated at two plus R, right? So it is zero. So what is R actually? It is F, two, F of two, okay? So you just check, so the remainder can also be directly determined by this formula, right? So what is F2? So you just calculate F of 2. You'll see it is 2 power 5 minus of 3 times 2 cube plus 2 into 2 plus 1. So what is the value you see? 32 minus of 24 plus 4 plus 1. Okay. So if I will see, it is 37 minus 24. So it is 13, isn't it? So it is exactly same as, so we have determined our remainder 13. So this is actually remainder theorem. So which says, So it also comes from uh, division algorithm. So if I divide fx by a linear factor x minus a, then so you can see, so if we divide, so if we divide fx by x minus of a, okay, then what is the remainder? You can determine the remainder as is always f of a, okay? So you can directly find the remainder using remainder theorem, okay? So let us take another example. Say uh, you are dividing fx, say fx equal to x cubed minus 3x square plus 3x minus of one by say x minus of one, okay? So what is a here? It is one. So what is the remainder r? Obviously, using remainder theorem, I can determine. So it is f of 1, right? So if, what is f of 1? It is 1 minus of 3 plus 3 minus of 1. So it is 0, isn't it? So remainder is 0, right? So, so here also we can say another point. That means whenever remainder is 0, then the function fx is perfectly divisible by x minus 1, x minus of a, right? So that means x minus 1 becomes a factor of fx, right? So you can see x cubed minus of 3x square plus 3x minus 1. What is it? It is actually x minus 1 whole cube, isn't it? So you can see x minus 1 is actually a factor of fx, okay? So here we can write our factor theorem. So which says, so if x minus of a is a factor of x, fx, then f of a is 0. Okay. 